Hey, old folks. Just a thought here. In the Delphi trial, apparently Rick Allen in on his fishing license, that was changed to five foot four to five foot six. And according to the prosecution, this is highly suspicious. Highly high. And he changed his weight, his weight with what? 15 pounds. Remember the description of Bridge Guy and the witnesses claiming to have seen Bridge Guy is 5'10 and muscular with poofy hair, brown poofy hair. Why, if Rick Allen is the actual killer, why would he change his appearance on a fishing license to be looking more like the description of Bridge Guy? Why? Can you tell me that? Anyone? Anyone? Why would a killer make themselves more like the description of the suspect the cops are looking for? Why? How does that make him more of a suspect? I don't, uh, I don't get it. Please, you need to explain it to me, folks, because I don't see it. I, I really don't. And for the rest of the evidence, if you follow my <laughs> coverage at all, you know my opinion on uh, uh, toolmark guys. It's a uh, fake science, and apparently. If the information is correct, when they cycled the round through Mr. Allen's gun, it didn't leave good enough marks. So they fired a new round to get markings that was good enough. Well, if they claim the bullet on the scene was uh, unspent, shouldn't the comparison be with another unspent bullet, not an actual pew pew bullet? Something's off here, don't you say, folks? And these are just two examples. There are so, so many more, and you can learn more about it on my playlist called The Delphi Murders. I've been doing some 20 streams and videos on this subject. Folks, I don't think he did it. At least the evidence against him is extremely weak and that is including the confessions had it been one confession maybe two where he gets <laughs> the details correct yeah well that's but 61 confessions folks come on with everything from he shot them in the back which we know is not correct. He also confessed to murdering his family, which we also know is not correct. And he might, through pure guesswork, or with some help from prison guards, inmates, and cops, and investigators, and the prosecution, he might have gotten a few details correct. If you confess 60 times, the chances increase that one of those or a combination of a few of those 
will have some similarities. But I need you to do me a favor, folks. Go into the Innocence Project and skim through the people who has been exonerated, who had false confessions as basis for their conviction. There are a lot of them. False confessions are a dime a dozen. If the physical evidence isn't there, it does not matter that he confessed six, definitely not 61 times. These are just a few examples that popped into my head. I hope you're following uh, Lawyer Lee and Andrea Burkhardt for actual trial coverage. I cannot cover that trial because I'm not there. I was there in Delphi in August. Me and Mo in the Deep End made a walkthrough throughout Delphi, Indiana. It's not a big place, folks. From the courthouse to the place where Mr. Allen was employed is a five minute walk. And in between is the sheriff's office. For five full years and 14,000 tips to the tip line, not one went, hmm, that guy who works over there, who we see on the town once in a while, doesn't he look like bridge guy? Not one in the entirety of Delphi, Indiana and the surroundings looked at Mr. Allen. Not his co-workers, not his bosses, not his friends, neighbors, not one. Shouldn't that tell you something? And in trial, the prosecution, when having these witnesses on the stand who said they saw a bridge guy, they never asked, is the person you saw as bridge man or bridge guy, is he here in the courtroom today? And the reason, folks, is an old lawyer saying, don't ask questions you don't know the answer to. But in this case, I do believe that the prosecution knows the witnesses who was on the bridge that day or around the bridge that day. They can't identify Rick Allen because they didn't see him. And I believe the prosecution knows this by now. But they still put him on trial. They still put him in prison for years. It's not, uh, it's not right, folks. Even if you believe Mr. Allen is guilty, it, it's still not right. It just isn't. Thank you for listening in, folks. I'll see you in the next video or stream. I'm Nick. I'm your favorite Viking lawyer, the Santa Laws. And uh, hug your family. Unless your family is crap, then screw them and give your love to the people who deserve it. Okay? See you next time. Bye-bye.